Hello, I'm Frank Hannaway, and welcome to Big Journey Small Steps. I had a few minutes. I thought I'd pop in here and make a quick video and let you know what's going on. If you're new to my channel, most of what I talk about is uh, my mother who has Alzheimer's, is, has, is moving into late stage Alzheimer's, and how I take care of her. So anyway, um, last week I made a video and said she had been taken to the hospital, she couldn't walk anymore, and then we were going to rehab. Well, since then, we went to rehab. And we managed to stay in rehab for three days, and then she was hospitalized again. This time, she actually got the treatment she needed the first time. It turns out she had a raging UTI. They had seen the bacteria for that the first time we went, but because her white count was low, um, they didn't treat her. Uh, my doctor, my um, primary care doctor says that was a mistake, but anyway, it was the hospital and it wasn't in our hands, even though we were in a very good hospital. And I, I, I'm not a doctor, I don't know. So anyway, so we had her in there four days. If you go in on a Thursday, it's most likely you're not gonna get out until Monday if they don't get you right out on Friday morning. And in both cases, she had to have uh, urinalysis done because they thought she had a urinary tract infection. and. And to get the full spectrum of that takes 48 hours. And then they start going through they, the antibiotics one by one and try them against, against the particular strain of bacteria that you have in your body to see which one works because so many of the bacteria have become resistant to antibiotics. So anyway, so she ended up back in the hospital. She's now back in rehab, and she's actually doing pretty well. But what happened over the past week was I began to think about where we are, where we're going, um, and what's in her best interest. And we're, the plan right now is for her to be in rehab as long as they'll keep her, because um, they're they're wonderful there. She's getting good care. I can run over there. I could run over there every five minutes if I wanted to, or I could stay there all the time, which I don't. Um, and Janet, our sitter, goes over. But um, we're, we plan to get her there and get her as strong and as mobile as possible. She has started standing again and taking a hesitant step or two. So I, they, she got very little physical therapy in the hospital, and um, they aren't very, they aren't as aggressive with it in the hospital. But we know she's all right. We know she doesn't have any breaks or anything like that. So she needs to be pushed. So that will, it will extend the enjoyment of her life. Sita has just gotten a bone and brought it behind me and is chewing on it. So anyway, she's back in rehab. So I was giving you our plan. So the plan is to bring her home and with the help of hospice, keep her here as long as it can be done safely. I realized last week that, that if your ego gets involved, you're not a very good caretaker because I wanted to say I can handle this somehow. The trouble is I have spinal stenosis, uh, which is a definite impairment. And I usually, the way I handle my problems with my back, I, I sort of baby it. I don't do things that I know are going to cause me pain. And then I started saying to myself, well, can I do more than I'm doing now? What would happen? So I went to my doctor yesterday and he reminded me of some of the times that I have overextended my back and ended up not able to move for several days or one time several weeks. So that's just foolish. And it could also result in my mother being injured. So I want to keep her here. I want to take care of her in her own home, but I started looking into memory care. And the good news was that it was less expensive than I had thought it would be. Um, 
mom has an IRA that uh, produces enough income and also there's enough of it there that she just, it's not feasible that she would ever qualify for Medicaid. She would if it were just on the basis of Social Security and her retirement check, that would be fine. But because she has this IRA, she either would have to spend it, which is difficult to do, or um, that's all, that's the only way. And just the um, disbursement we have to take every year puts her way over where you would have to be to go on Medicaid. So it's not an option. And plus, we planned, we're not trying to go on Medicaid, but you start looking at um, at healthcare facilities and memory care. And I found, I had thought it would cost a minimum of $8,000. And that is not the case. Um, I looked at some pretty nice places yesterday. I haven't visited them yet, but I looked at them online and talk to their marketing people. And we were looking at like 5,200 a month with perks, which is a lot of money, but it's not eight. And home nursing care is about $20 an hour minimum times 24 times, you know, 30 days a month. It ends up being $16,000 or something, which is not really feasible for us. I mean, it, it would be, I suppose we could sustain it for a while, but then what? Then you end up back in the same spot. So anyway, she's doing very well. She's happy as a clam. She's gotten to the point she doesn't mind being left, which is just a godsend for me when I know she's being well taken care of. And um, we, we were at Tampa General Hospital. I, I just can't tell you what wonderful care we had there. What wonderful, patient, loving nurses and techs and doctors and everything. And yeah, the admitting doctor may have made a mistake not treating her UTI initially, but it was done with the best of intentions. And we're always trying not to feed her too many antibiotics because in the long run, it um, it hurts your immunity to other things. So that's, I just had these few minutes. I, I did want to keep everybody up to date. Thank you for spending time with me. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you peace and joy.